What's up guys, it's Eli here with Night Jiu Jitsu. I'm here with the lovely Anya and we're talking about a topic I haven't really addressed um, by itself. I've mentioned a couple of little things in other videos, but uh, defending against Kimura because I get people that ask me about Kimura, like what can we do to defend against this? How can I escape this? How can I counter this? And so I thought I'd show a few details, a few little uh, concepts, principles, things like that to help get you out of this position. So the first thing I want to start from is just kind of a basic application from closed guard. If Anya has me here in her closed guard and I screwed up somehow, she did something really good somehow and she started this Kimura on me. So when she goes for the Kimura here like this, it's important like conceptually, first of all, if we understand how the Kimura works, then we understand how to reverse engineer, deconstruct, and then ultimately defend it um, from a variety of positions. So for her to finish this, she needs to bring us back toward the floor here like this. She needs to cut an angle off to the side, separate my arm from my body, and get her hips in a position where she's using her body to create the torque. So her arms aren't separated too far from her body. So then from there, she keeps this 90 degree bend in my arm and she takes my hand toward the back of my head and then she gets the Kimura like that. So I know that if I can like reverse engineer those concepts and I can create some separation, I can create a straightening of the arm and I can do all these different things, I can defend the Kimura. So a good way that that can happen from here is this. If she were to catch this here like this, and so this is a problem already. I know that if she separates my arm from my body and brings us back to the floor, I'm in some trouble. So I'm gonna post my leg on the same side. She's attacking my left arm, I'm gonna post my left leg up. So as we go back toward the floor here like this, I'm gonna catch the inside of my thigh on this side. What I'm gonna look to do is I'm gonna use the grip here and I'm gonna drive my knee down to the floor. This is gonna create a little bit of a wrist lock on her, so I'm gonna be careful. But what will ultimately happen if she wants to get out of that wrist lock is she'll have to let go and break that grip here. Now, I still may be in jeopardy here where she's still got this kind of uh, this isolation of my arm. So to finish out on that, I'm going to push her hip away because if she gets her hips underneath me and dishes it toward that side, she can still create some problems for me and she can ultimately separate my arm and get back into the Kimura position. So I'm going to keep posted out here on her hip this way and then I'm going to keep driving this way here and create enough torque where she ultimately she has to abandon this because she's starting to get in her own little Kimura here herself. So then eventually she'll let go and I'll get my arm back into neutral and hopefully not make the same mistake that I did again. Now, um, as a continuation of that, sometimes what will happen is if I were creating separation and I was like pushing this leg down so ultimately to pass it. So sometimes she'll catch me in transition and so if she catches me in transition like this, now the problem here may be that she'll finish this from back in the guard or closed guard or knee shield or something like that, but she also has the ability from here to go here and bridge me over <laughs> this way and then roll to the top and start to finish too. So that's another bad thing that can happen. So this is I have a, a couple other little details that I have to worry about on this one. So she does catch me in transition here like this. Again, I wanna try to post on that hip here like this. I wanna clear my leg so that she doesn't have the knee lever to be able to flip me over or the ability to bridge powerfully. From there, I'm gonna drop my knee. I'm gonna step my leg behind her really nice and tight like this. Then I'm gonna swap. I'm gonna bring my right knee up off the floor here this way and I'm gonna sit back and then I'm gonna have my own little catch right here. Because of the configuration that she had on my wrist, whenever I switch my legs over, now I have her in essentially an arm bar position where I could ultimately try to finish with a straight arm. So let's look at that one more time. When we get here and she's caught this mid transition, I'm still gonna post on her hip. I'm gonna clear here like this. Now, she can still finish this if she creates some kind of swinging, rotating motion. So I don't want that to happen. So I need to post on her hip, reinforce behind her back. And then I'm gonna go here this way, switch my hips, and this arm is gonna catch down by her wrist so that whenever I sit back, I wind up in this kind of position. I can create the separation ultimately. And even if I don't catch the arm bar, I've still successfully defended the Kimura and turned it into uh, my finish for my guard pass. Sometimes we'll wind up in this kind of configuration where she has uh, maneuvered to this top side position like this. It's important to note that this may have started from side control, this may have started for some kind of back transition, but she has a, a good fork in the road right here. She could essentially cover my face right here and then she could finish the Kimura like this, right? So I don't want this to happen. So I'm trying to do a couple things. I need to keep my elbow nice and close to my body and I need to fight her hands on this grip here so that she can't ultimately create that separation she needs. And rather than grabbing my own hand, it's a little stronger if I can grab 
her hands and her grip configuration. Now, the other trouble here, though, is that she may use this as a back transition. So she could uh, ultimately slide this knee uh, farther behind my back down here, step over, and then go to take my back off of this. And so this is also not a great idea for me either. So I've got to get my elbow back to center. So in order to do this, I know a couple of things that she wants. She wants to either cover my head or she wants to swing to my back. So again, I'm gonna keep my elbows in nice and close so she doesn't create separation by stepping over my, my bicep with her leg. And then I also wanna uh, come up here and I wanna fight her grip on this side, right? So now from here, if I keep this pull in this extension like this here and I'll play this little rubber band game where I pull one direction then I extend the other direction, right? So uh, from here, even if she is starting to cover my head up like this here, right? Then I can pull nice and strong like this here and then I can slip if I slip my elbow to the inside here like this and then start pushing away on her hip, then I still use those same kind of concepts that we did before where I'm fighting the grip, I'm, I'm uh, bringing my elbow back to center, I'm not allowing the separation, I'm posting on the hip. I do have to be careful because I am playing a little dangerous of a game where I am extending my arms from bottom so she could take advantage of that, but I'm trying to minimize the amount of time that she gets there. Another place you can see this is like from if she had me in like a crucifix kind of position. So if we started here, and she winds up in this crucifix. So she's got this kind of uh, almost like a split seat belt, or she can go all the way to the Kimura grip here like this. So she's got this double wrist lock configuration. Now, she can submit me down here, not so much with the Kimura from here, but I do have to free both sides of the arms. So uh, what I can start looking to do here, rather than trying to fight and pull back here because she's stronger than me, she's fighting two arms versus my one arm, right? So if that's the case here, then what I'm gonna look to do is I'm gonna slide my head down and I'm gonna extend my right arm, the one that she's attacking up this way here, right? So now from this position, she's kind of limited. Even though she has good connection to me here, whatever she goes to tr try to do to attack me, my head is already on the floor. She's gonna have to transition out of this and at this point so now I can start to turn and I can start to uh, suck my elbows back inside so I'm not in the immediate threat of the the, um, the crucifix or of the double wrist lock configuration Kimura all that stuff right there if we find ourselves in side control which is another popular place to finish the Kimura from what so what she has to do is she has to create separation she has to get this double wrist lock configuration here like this and then her hips need to be turned to face me either to isolate this uh, free arm or to step over my head to create better leverage here. So what she's gonna do, she's gonna roll me up on my side and then she's gonna finish that way. So extremely important then that I start to get this elbow back toward me. So we're gonna use uh, similar concepts as before, but what I, I need to really try to do here is I know she gets this arm to the floor, or this, she, this elbow to the floor, she creates a new leverage point that's gonna be really powerful in finishing that. So what I wanna try to look to do is I'm gonna try to get this hand underneath my body and push to create separation. So if you see this hand here, pushing to create separation. So I'm gonna try to get my knee to the inside. So once I create that separation, I get my knee inside here this way, and then I'll use that to help try to pull and separate. Now I can come back to my frame and possibly start working into some kind of escape right off of there. But even if I don't get the escape and I move myself back into side control, at least I'm not under the immediate threat of that Kimura from there. So just a few simple concepts. Um, they're not always the easiest thing to apply, even though they are fairly simple. Um, the idea of uh, creating elongation rather than that, that 90 degree bend, kind of separating her grips, posting on her hip whenever uh, possible to prevent that rotation that she needs to finish. And it can be applied in a variety of different places. So understanding like the basic concepts of how the Kimura works, how to reverse engineer it, that's what's gonna get you the most mileage on being able to defend it. So hopefully these uh, few little different uh, positions that we looked at finishing and how to escape it and how to counter it will help you in preventing it and ultimately defending it in the future. So I appreciate it if I left one out that you need to know how to defend against a Kimura or a different configuration of the Kimura, let me know in the comment section. Thank you very much, Anya, and I appreciate it. Keep watching Night Jiu-Jitsu channel.